Hi there, and welcome to Aista Magic Cloud. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the newest feature in Aista. It's just recently been released, and it's the ability to use machine learning and artificial intelligence to generate Harpyland code. So here I am at Aista.com. There's a link in the description of this YouTube video to where you can click to reproduce what I'm doing in this video. I already have an account. However, you can sign up for an account, and you can also immediately create a new uh, Cloudlet as you're signing up if you want to and choose your location here. I already have a Cloudlet, so I'm just going to sign into uh, my existing uh, Cloudlet uh, or my existing account in Hub, and um, then uh, I'm going to have a look at my Cloudlets. Uh, and as you can see here, I have two professional Cloudlets. Uh, those are six euros per month each. And then I have a demo Cloudlet. I'm just going to use my demo Cloudlet here. But uh, if you don't have a Cloudlet, you can create a new Cloudlet up here in the top right corner. And uh, actually, let me do that because it's kind of cool. Uh, yes, delete it. So I'm deleting my demo Cloudlet now. And uh, then uh, I'm creating a new Cloudlet. You can only create one demo Cloudlet for the record. So you kind of like. Uh, need to either use an existing uh, demo Cloudlet or whatever. So now I'm creating a new uh, Cloudlet. It's being provisioned inside of our Kubernetes cluster in London, I chose. So you can create it in New York, San Jose, and you know, Frankfurt and Singapore. And uh, this process takes uh, some 30 seconds or something. Now the reasons why I'm showing this, and the, then when the Cloudlet is done, you can click Eagle can click the, the URL here to open it up, at which point you're brought on towards your Cloudlet. Now, the reasons why I'm showing all this in uh, this video is because um, I assume that this video is going to be viewed by a lot of people who have no previous relationship to uh, the Magic Cloud. So I want to show the entirety of the process. Here you can watch a YouTube video explaining the, the main parts of the dashboard. I'm just going to dismiss this guy. And then I'm going to go to Hyper IDE, and here is the new thing, Open AI Chat GPT. You see, if I click this thing now, then I'm immediately asked for an Open API key. If you don't have an Open API key, you can simply click here, and this allows you to register at Open API and um, uh, get a key. Uh, I'm going to create a new secret key here, but I'm going to destroy it before I publish the YouTube video, so there's no point in trying to use my key, right? So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard, then I'm going to close this guy, and then I'm just going to paste in the, the key here. Yet again, there's no reasons to try to, to steal my key. I'm going to destroy this key before I publish the video. Then you can select your engine. Now, as a general rule of thumb, uh, Qudi is better. You, you see, I in my account, I already have a bunch of pre-defined engines. I'm going to get this list populated with my previously trained engine. But, but, but I'm going to choose a new model, and then I'm going to start the training of that model. And then I'm going to click Save. This brings me on to uh, this model dialog that shows me the training material for open AI, for instance, use Hyperlambda to count all service side cache items, cache.count, list uh, all cache items, use Hyperlambda to set cache, blah, 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 etc. There are 691 snippets doing all sorts of weird stuff. Now, when I click start training here, what is actually happening is that uh, this training material is uh, submitted to open API and open AI's API, and then it might take everything from like three to like three minutes to like 30 minutes, or maybe sometimes even an hour before the training is done. When the training is done, you will get a notification up here in the top right corner, uh, WebSocket published by the backend, informing the front end of that training is done. However, you can also see it by, by clicking Open AI here. And if you have an existing training session, then uh, you would be given um, a notification here that there are uh, ongoing training sessions. You can also go to the log and check. Uh, here you can see 18 seconds ago, it checked if Open AI is finished training. Now, in the meantime, uh, you can ask 
OpenAI, because now by default, it's using the default query engine, which is, I advise you to use the query engine. Why? Because it's uh, not as um, uh, good as DaVinci, but it's significantly faster and significantly less expensive. Now, if I just ask OpenAI to create a hyper lambda endpoint for me that sends an email, right? Then basically, Kuri is going to create garbage for me. This is the default engine, right? That that um, uh, OpenAI is using, and it's kind of like got some parts, but, but I mean, this is garbage, really. This is what it is. However, when my training session is done, if I ask the exact same question, then boom, it's going to deliver perfect hyper lambda for me. So uh, while we wait for the training session to be done, uh, I'm just going to open uh, my log in a different window and uh, keep it here and come back when my training is done and show you the rest of the video. So now that my open AI model has finished its training, uh, it took about uh, 10, 15 minutes for me. Then let's just uh, close this tab and let's uh, ask the question once more. So the exact same question, previously it gave us garbage. Let's see now what it uh, gives us. And this is perfect. Hyper Lambda code. I can now actually copy and paste this code or just click copy here. Then I can close this dialog. Then I can create a new module. I can call it, uh, whoops, click this one to create a new folder. I can create it, uh, a new folder and name it tutorial. Then I can select that folder, create a new Hyper Lambda file, call it send-email.com. Post.hl. Post, of course, is important because I want it to be a HTTP post endpoint, and .hl, of course, is important because I want it to be a hyper lambda file. And I can just click create, and I can just paste in this code here. I can save it, Alt S or Option S, or click the save button, and then I can go to my uh, endpoints, and I can filter for Sam dash email, and here's my HTTP endpoint. And now, of course, I don't have an SMTP server configured. So if I write Thomas Hansen here and th at aista.com, then of course it's going to fail because I, I haven't configured an SMTP server. I can even go to my log and have a look at it. The host name cannot be empty. So the, the way I can fix that is to go to Miss Configuration and I can add SMTP settings here as I wish. However, uh, the important part is that uh, OpenAI is now actually capable of generating extremely good Hyper Lambda code. If I now write, for instance, insert name, email, and address into my CRM database, and it's customer's table, then hopefully this is going to actually produce code that is fully functional. Uh, and here you can see it connects to my customer's database. It, uh, well, it got the database wrong, so let's rephrase the question. Sometimes you have to rephrase your question. Uh, insert name, email, and address into customer's table in CRM database, for instance. Let's try this one, see if it gets it correct. And it still keeps on wanting to connect to customer's database. It should be CRM here. But I mean, it's actually very, very accurate. It's, it's like 90% accurate. If I now, for instance, uh, write, create a hyper lambda endpoint that takes name, uh, zip code, an age and inserts into my contacts database table in my logistics database. Let's see what it produces now. And here you can see it um, 
name, name, zip code, zip, and age. It even automatically determines that age is probably an integer value. Now, instead of uh, connecting to logistics, it connects to magic, which is wrong. And instead of uh, inserting into contacts, it's inserting into categories. But it's very accurate in its ability to extract the arguments and pass it in as the values collection to my data.create uh, invocation. So now if, if, if I already copy this thing and I just slightly modify it, I paste it into a tutorial as a foo uh, insert dot post dot hl now I, ins uh, I paste this uh, code into this file and then i just slightly modify it and um, contacts database table contacts and logistics a name zip and age okay if i now save this and i open up uh, sql studio and I create, uh, actually, I need to open up databases. And I create a logistics uh, database. And I edit it. And I add a new table. And I call it contacts. Uh, and then I add, uh, let's see, name, zip, and age. Name, column type text. Zip, column type text and age, column type, numeric. And uh, then I go back and I sanity check uh, this thing. OK, integer, zip, string, name, insert was successful. And then I'm doing the logistics database and contacts table. If I now open up uh, endpoints in a different tab and I find insert here now, and I write Thomas Hansen, zip, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and age. <laughs> well, I kind of want to be 42, I guess. <laughs> then here we go. Now, if I go back to uh, SQL view in SQL Studio, select all from contacts. Here's my record. So besides from these two edits, contacts, and logistics, I was actually capable of providing natural text to HyperID, have it invoke open AI's API uh, using the query engine, and transform that into working Hyperlambda code. I think that's pretty kick-ass. So let's see what more we can ask it to do. Um, create an endpoint that concatenates two strings given as arguments. Perfect code. Except that it saves it as a file. <laughs> it should probably like, uh, OK, whatever. Uh, let's ask it for some file operations. Load the content of the file called etc. foo.txt. Cross your fingers. Perfect code. This loads the file given the path etc. dash slash foo.txt. Uh, save hello world to a file with the file name of uh, hello.md. Perfect code. Except it saves foobar and not hello world, but close enough. Right. Now, I want to emphasize the current release of Face the Magic Cloud is uh, this is a beta feature we are just releasing now. And we are going to be working a lot on it to improve it further. But already at this point, you can actually use it to create 90% accurate Hyperlambda code, 100% uh, automatically. And um, you can open up 
open AI here and you can change its uh, temperature, you can change its uh, max tokens, and you can have multiple engines you are using and switching back and forth between. Now, I want to emphasize Open API uh, is a commercial service. It costs you money, but when you sign up, they will give you $18. To train your Open AI account uh, using the default uh, training session, which you can see here, to check off start training, uh, cost you roughly one dollar and um, then afterwards uh, if you're using the Kuri engine then you can ask some approximately 200 to 500 questions per dollar this implies that you can basically use it for free for probably a month or three or something before you actually have to start paying I would guess that if you use it professionally asking dozens of questions every single day then it would cost you cost you like a dollar a month or, or something maximum. So anyways, uh, that was it for today's uh, YouTube video. Uh, remember to like the video, uh, click subscribe and click the bell and share the video with your friends. Leave a comment what you think about it. And uh, there's a link in the description of this YouTube video to where you can reproduce what I did in this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.